Thank you for coming, Dr. Mandala. It is a great honor to be here to speak at Tisakwa's retirement party here. He is a great role model for me and many others. And I will talk about this later, but first I'd like to talk a little bit about my journey into science and of course into microbiology, my field. When I was young, like most kids, I didn't know what I wanted to do, I didn't know what I wanted to be. When I grew up, and my pathway to science and to my current career has been very long. But I was never alone in my endeavors and achievements. I always had people who are there to inspire me, to encourage me, and to guide me, and sometimes even to criticize me. All of these people have made me better and have made me the people, the person that I am today. And I share with my, uh, my achievements with my parents, my husband, okay, um, who has bear with all my ambitions and my aspirations. Um, Mrs. Byer, I know some of you don't know her, but she has opened the doors for me. Okay, and many with into many opportunities, so I'm very appreciative of her. Uh, my teachers and professors are also okay, a big help in my journey, and of course, my big family here. Okay. I have been so blessed that I have so many people around me who are so encouraging, and just encouraging words, just like the you know, that is very. Um, to me, that's very encouraging, and I'm just like, yes, I will work harder. So every, for every person who has supported me, given me a chance or opportunity, for every person who has given me a word of encouragement, and all the, so those people who have sometimes not have been so kind or have said you know, um, kind things, have said unkind things to me, I thank them too. Because sometimes, you know, they are, when you look back at it, it, it makes you want to be better, okay? Strive to be better, strive to do better. My pathway into science started with my parents. My dad had the equivalent of a grade school education in Laos, but he could speak and write in Hmong, I mean in Laos, not in Hmong though. And my mom, who never learned how to write her name until we came to the U.S. here, they valued education and encouraged their kids to pursue higher education. 
My father never said much to me, even though through his actions, I know that he valued education. Uh, my dad, though, he did say one thing that I will keep with me um, forever. And when I went to college, all he said was, oh, and he said, okay. I don't know, young, the young people, but you know, that war means a lot in Hmong. Okay. My mom, though, was the opposite. She said a lot. To, but to me, she said a lot, and you know, sometimes when our parents said a lot, you think of it as nagging, so it's, well, I knew one ear out the other. But for my mom, even though she says that, as I'm getting older, you know that your parents are right a lot of the times because when you have children of your own, you start repeating the same things to your children. <laughs> then, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, catch yourself, and you're, you're like, I'm becoming my parent. <laughs> um, some of you with young children, you'll know what I'm talking about in a couple of years. Um, but my mom, she showed me that she valued education. She wanted me to be educated. And the way I know that is because she always comes to my parent-teacher conferences. Okay? Even though didn't, she didn't speak a word of English, and I had to translate to her what my teachers were saying, she was always there. And I know she's proud because of the look on her face, you know, when the teachers say, um, and I'm explaining to her, she has that proud look on her face, which makes me feel good, you know, that she's happy, that I am doing well. Even though my dad never said much to me either about whether he's proud of me or not, when my mom and dad came to visit me in California, we met up with the, one of the relatives at a New Year's celebration. And my dad was telling the relative about me, you know, and I can see and hear in his voice how proud he was of me. This made me so happy. For the first time, my dad was telling other people about me, you know, and just the look on his face um, and see, seeing how proud my, my dad was of me made me feel so much better. Sometimes praises from lots of peop other people. It makes you feel good, but not as good as when your parents say, I'm proud of you, you know. I know most parents are so reserved and they usually don't come out and say that, but they're, by their actions sometimes, you know, that shows how they are proud of you. Um, that was enough for me at least. Another person who has um, indulged my every inkling of talent <laughs> was Mrs. Spire. She introduced me to the limitless opportunity outside of my little world. Okay? Those of you who know her know what I'm talking about. Okay? Every um, school, when I went to apply for college, she would take me to look at all the different schools okay, to see what I wanted to do. Also, my teachers and professors introduced me to the world of science. I know some of you, when you're going to college, you're scared of your teachers. It's, it's okay to respect them and to give them all that, but it's also good to talk to them. Sometimes they know a lot and they can give you um, more advice about what you should do, how you should do it, and that. So I depended a lot on my uh, professors and teachers as well. The way I got into science started when I was in eighth grade. I went to a Catholic, Catholic Central, I know a, lot, a number of you in Appleton, or if you know Appleton, you know what school that is. It's a um, Catholic grade school. I went there and in eighth grade, one of my teachers gave me an opportunity to go to a summer school camp for science. And after I attended that summer camp, I knew I was gonna be in science. I didn't know which field yet, but I was so fascinated by it. 
So I knew I was, I was going to be in science. But I didn't find my passion in microbiology until actually I went to grade school or to graduate school. At that time, my husband and I had moved to California. Okay, we had gotten married, we moved to California, and that's after I got my bachelor's from um, Lawrence University in Appleton. And I wanted to continue school, so I applied to Chico State, which is California State University at Chico. And I got into the program, and one of the professors, he advised me on what classes I should take, and he said, there are these two classes that you should, or you may be interested in. And one of them was uh, mammalogy, which is the study of mammals. The other one was microbiology. And he said, well, just take these two okay, and see which one you like better. Well, I just fell in love with microbiology. And by the end of the week, I had dropped mammalogy. Okay. And from there, I, after I got my master's from Chico State, and the, I went to um, UC Davis for my PhD in microbiology. When I finished my PhD program, it had been 12 years post high school. I had gone to school 12 years after high school. And then I worked up four more years as a postdoctoral researcher. Most um, PhD research uh, uh, graduates they do that okay? and then I started thinking about what I wanted to do with for the rest of my life because I figured at that time you know my family was growing I had a husband I had a, a couple of kids by that time and then I needed to make a living okay? so I decided that may, there are three ways that I could go one was to go into government and work as a researcher in government. Another is to go into industry. And then the third one was to go into teaching. I had applied for a couple of government jobs, research jobs, but because mostly they, I didn't work in government yet, they usually hire from within, so I didn't get those jobs even though I had uh, many interviews. So I decided that maybe okay, I will try academia, okay, teaching at the university. So I found this job, and in academia, the people are very specialized. Like, I am a professor of microbiology, and in microbiology it's kind of big, there's many fields, even in microbiology. And when I was looking at the positions, there's only one okay, that was in my area. And it was, at least in California, that was close to where um, my husband's family was. So I decided to apply for that position. And of course, I got an interview and I was hired for that position. And I've been working there for, as I mentioned, for the last 19 years. During the difficult times as I was going through school, I find the majority of my inspiration from the people in my life, the majority of which are in this room right now. Okay? All your encouragements. Every time you ask me how I am, in, I am doing in school, every time you tell me, you know, those are words that have made such a difference to me, so I want to thank you for that. This is why I feel that whenever I achieve a goal, I did not do it alone. Because you were always with me. And I also mean that literally too, because um, for I think for most of my achievements, my husband and I have four children, and for every achievement, we had a child. <laughs> um, I think after um, my, uh, I got my bachelor's, uh, I had my oldest son. Okay? After I, my master's, I, we had our second son, and then after my PhD, we had our third son. 
And then after uh, I got my job, we had our fourth child, was, uh, which is a daughter. Okay? So we have three sons and, and one daughter. And the reason why we have them so far apart in the span of um, age between our oldest son and our youngest daughter is 16 years. Okay? So one that's really big and, and when we had the other one. But the reason why is because um, my husband and I, we um, lived away from family. Okay? We lived far from family, so that's why the theory did that. And I'm not going to lie to you, because um, going through school with kids, okay, and having kids, it's hard. Okay. It's hard, but I will say this, it's worth it. Because when you are done, your kids are grown, you have your family, um, it's worth the hard work. Another person who has made a great influence in my life is Tisekwa. Tisekwa has been a role model to me my whole life. And this is why I stand here with a great sense of pride and honor as we gather here to celebrate his retirement. My uncle has always been someone I looked up to and tried to emulate. He was the first in our family to go to college, earn a bachelor's degree, and get a great job. Congratulations on your retirement. You haven't forgot the hand that fed you. That's a good thing.